One of the few good things to come out of this global pandemic is a hell of a lot more people are riding bikes. People are stuck at home and want a safe way to get some fresh air and exercise so as to prevent themselves from rearranging the living room for the fourth time this month out of boredom. Bikes are selling like hotcakes, and you know how much people snap up hotcakes. People are riding a ton and staying healthy and as reasonably happy as one can during these trying times. But if you've been in the market for any bike stuff in the past, year dear god where does this time go you know all too well that with this surge in bike demand and with the pandemic as experts call kind of wrecking the global supply chain bike parts have been either extremely hard to come by or way more expensive than they were during more normal times thus bringing a resurgence to the most cost effective way to build up a fixed gear converting an old road bike. That's exactly what Jesse Bader did to dip his toes into fixed gear cycling with conversion like you've never seen before. Now let's take a closer look at how to build fixed gear on the cheap with this ultimate fixed gear conversion in this bike check. Speaking of bikes, you should check out a portion of this video is sponsored by Wabi Cycles. To learn more about the bike that I ride on a daily basis, stick around until the end of the video to learn more about Wabi. Jesse writes, I wanted to try a fixed gear bicycle for some time. I have a long time friend who brought up the topic frequently. Yeah, fixed gear riders, we tend to do that. And now years later, I stumbled across your channel while researching and thinking about building a bullet proof bike for pure transportation. I've learned so much from your videos and I really enjoy the bike checks. The NJS bikes look especially beautiful to me. Your videos in general fan the flames of desire to get a fixed gear. And nothing makes running this YouTube channel more satisfying than knowing that I have successfully indoctrinated another person into trying out the stupid and impractical but somehow insanely fun world of fixed gear. As we are in the middle of a pandemic, I'm sure that you know that bikes and components are sold out and in limited supply all over. Because of the shortage, I figured I'd try to get one put together on my own so that I could really test out if I like it or not over this coming summer. If it turns out to be my thing, I'll eventually get a better setup. I'll evaluate after I achieve some fun, hopefully, on this build. Good idea because unlike some other more popular and more competitive forms of cycling, fun is actually allowed in the world of fixed gear. Since buying a good new fixed gear at the time, December of 2020, was impossible due to availability, I went searching for a project owner. I found this, what I think is a pretty sweet Bridgestone 10-speed road bike from the 70s on Craigslist about an hour from my house. A big bonus was that it was the correct size for me and was mostly complete. I only knew to search for Bridgestone because of your awesome vids. I profiled a couple sweet NJS Bridgestones that I greatly admired. By the way, that Gold 3 wrencher you ended your 4 NJS video with is the GOAT. I still think about that bike sometimes before I fall asleep at night. Having your first fixed gear bear the same name as Timeless NJS frame sets and the legendary cult classics of the Bridgestone X01 and MB1s is certainly a great way to start getting into fixed gear riding. And yeah, this bike is more like the unambitious cousin of those legendary bikes. The one that is 35 and still lives at its mom's house, being made of straight gauge chromoly, but the fact that it is still made in Tokyo, Japan is a big selling point and enough to warrant at least five fixie points. The bike was well used and seemingly neglected when it came to maintenance. I swear all the bearings were in original grease, it was like hard clay, but the bike appears to have always been kept out of the weather as no wheel rust or corrosion of any type is present. Impressive considering that this bike is more than twice as old as me. Components cleaned up well, specifically all the bearings and races had basic wear and very minimal damage. It was easily veiled by a good quality repacking and adjustments. The bottom bracket, fork, and wheels run silky smooth, silent, and without play. As much as I like to try to steer people away from loose ball bearing components and to get sealed bearing stuff, 
You have to remember that this bike was made way before seal bearing components were widespread throughout the bike industry. And even then, as big of a pain in the neck as maintaining loose ball bearing components can be, if you know how to maintain them properly and repack and readjust them, they can feel silky smooth and next to brand new and last just about forever. The goal was to build the bike into a solid, functional, quality fixed gear to try out and to put to the test over this next summer for a fair and inexpensive investment. Not to do it as cheaply as possible, but to do it with the best balance of expense to quality as possible. The frame set is a 59.5 centimeter Bridgestone Kabuki from the early 1970s, made out of straight gauge tubing in Tokyo with a lugged construction because that was the only way to make a bike back then. And lugs weren't a luxury as they are now. One thing that is different about my bike than anything I've seen. The rear dropouts were originally almost true vertical. I have the tooling and expertise so I decided to fabricate custom track style extra thick dropouts that I slotted so that the original frame dropout slid down into the newly fabricated ones. I then tack welded and through pinned the custom dropouts into place. Pins were pressed in, then peened and flared out and hand worked flush. The only modification to the bike's original dropouts was to cut off the part that hung down blocking the new horizontal slot. The axle still sits in the exact same place against the original frame dropout. It's rock solid and I'm pretty stoked as I was able to make it work. I was looking at eccentric BBs and hubs and it turns real expensive and nightmarish real fast. The extra work was well worth it. It cost nothing and in the end the setup is as it should be without a bunch of crazy custom eccentrics to adjust and have slip later. That is a whole lot of math and precision and work just to put track ends on an old road bike just so you can try out fixed gear. <laughs> Most people, including myself, would just do something much more reasonable and find another frame set to convert. But the fact that you custom made your own track ends, weld them on, and it works, officially makes this the ultimate fixed gear conversion. I've never seen anything like this. I don't know if you're an engineer, but only an engineer would think that doing all this work would be a reasonable choice rather than just finding a different frame set to convert. Nonetheless, mad props to your mechanical skills. The bike comes equipped with some new and some old components to strike that fine balance between fun, reliability, and cost. The bars are a set of Nitto B269 risers in an extra medium width of 50 centimeters, finished with a vintage style brown leather grips for class, with a wallet friendly made in China stamp. The bars are attached to the SR threaded stem that came standard on the bike with generous amounts of rise for a saddle to bar drop of roughly zero, making this ultimate fixed gear conversion one comfy cruiser. For the saddle, we have a Brooks C17 in what they call orange, but is actually more of a tan color. And unfortunately, Brooks have moved to using a plastic frame instead of the previous aluminum frame on their cambiums. At least, plastic is lighter though and will save you 0.69 watts over 420 miles, so there's that. The saddle sits on top of the original SR seat post and is fastened with a Sugino seat post binder bolt. This bike has fixie points in the strangest places. <laughs> Moving on down, the pedals are the stock SR SP100 AL pedals, if that means anything to you, paired with hold fast foot straps in orange to complement Bridgestone's iconic finish. The cranks are the stock SR Apex that for some reason are 110 BCD. If you know why a 110 BCD crank set came stock on a 70s road bike, please let us know in the comments below because we really have no idea why. But at the very least, it makes the chain ring look absolutely massive for a maximum intimidation on the road. The chain ring is a respectfully massive SR Sake and 52 tooth paired with an 18 tooth cog and linked together with a KMC HL710L half link chain to keep the axle as close to the original position as possible. Again, slamming the rear wheel in the track ends just for the weirdest place to have fixie points. The wheels are Araya, wired on high pressure rims, which is to say that they're just run of the mill rims made by Araya in a 27 inch diameter because 
the 70s. The wheels are wrapped in Continental Gator skins, presumably because one, I constantly recommend them, and two, they come in 27 inch. And surprisingly enough, the total weight of this build with a 59.5 centimeter steel straight gauge chromoly frame set weighs in at a very respectable 22 pounds. This bike is very flattering to me because Looking at it, I can tell that you watch my videos because there's a handful of parts that I wholeheartedly recommend and the places that you spent money on are carefully selected to make the bike more fun to ride, to give you the most bang for your buck. Check out that video after you're done watching this one. This is by far the most extra fixed gear conversion that I've ever seen. Why would anyone want to go through all the extra step and effort and work just to put track ends on an old road bike frame that they probably won't even ride for longer than a year. Well, because some people take the word conversion way too literally. And more importantly, because they can, and most importantly, because your conversion doesn't have track ends, now does it? If you want to have your bike featured in this weekly bike check series, check out the instructions on how to do that in the description. Speaking of bikes that you should check out, this portion of the video was sponsored by Wobby Cycles. Every one of Wobby's design choices are meticulously made to give the purest ride quality for the money. And Wobby executes those choices perfectly, handmade by master craftsmen in Taiwan in a friendly bike shop in Denver, Colorado, that is eager to answer your questions and get you on a bike that you'll love. Wobby's relentless attention to detail results in Wallace, my daily 58 centimeter Wobby special, weighing in at 17.5 pounds or 7.97 kilos straight out of the box. That's well under 20 pounds for a stock bike with a completely steel lugged frame set and no carbon components. That attention to detail results in the best riding experience I've ever had with a snappy, lively ride quality that only top tier steel can bring. If you're looking for the bike that could very well put an end to your search for the perfect bike, check out Wobby linked at the top of the description. And Fixie Famous shoutouts to Justin Javier, Ellie Lovelace, David Clippins, Julian Corona, Stan Strong 108, Ryan Witz, OC Bike Crew, The Fix Federation, Zane Kolnick, Kelvin Ho, and Brandon Black for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through their support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter. So, ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.